So, <laughs> come smoke and chill. All right, so today's video is going to be something I was explaining to a client earlier. <clears throat> I had a client ask me, this rain is interesting. I had a client ask me, how do you decide the difference between a dream, a premonition, and the astral world? Once again, she asked the question, how do you decipher the difference between a dream, premonition, and tapping into the astral world? Well, in the most simplistic way I tried to explain to her, the way I perceive it or the way I see it is this. If it's a dream, Dreams often reflect emotions, as many things do. But dreams usually, uh, I'm sorry, dreams usually connect to an emotion that I haven't quite learned how to process, or an emotion or experience that I'm not quite fully aware of, or have the full capability of processing it the way that. I don't have the full capabilities of processing it in a way that I can understand it. So then you have to dream of a more creative way of applying the science of what you've experienced. A dream. And then it gets into the deeper concept of some dreams can indeed be premonitions. <clears throat> but there are some premonitions that aren't in a sense dreams but our realistic events that happen in the everyday life or in your everyday life or in your everyday future life. But this is what I'm trying to get to. A dream. I'm 16 years old. I smoke some cigarettes. I go home. I go to sleep. I go to sleep. Now what I'm perceiving in this dream is drowning, potentially um, getting in a fight and being strangled. These are the different things that can happen that night from smoking a cigarette. Now, this dream is symbolic. This dream is symbolizing, A, probably the struggle that your body's going through with this new foreign object or, or substance you placed in it, like tobacco. So it's showing you your physical struggle against another energy, really yourself, and it's strangling you or restricting your breathing like that cigarette does. Now, you smoking that cigarette, you consciously know that it can damage you, but your body unconsciously doesn't truly know the science of how it can damage you. So this is kind of like how the body unconsciously becomes aware of its true damage. It'll create a trauma. It'll create like an experience called a dream that will stick with you. Now, it might not stick with you consciously because you don't remember your dreams, but it will stick with you unconsciously or subconsciously. Now, a premonition. This is, in a sense, a premonition because it's giving you insight into something you're doing to yourself that is damaging yourself in the present, and then eventually, you know, the effect from this uh, tobacco is you won't be able to breathe. This is why it's showing you being strangled, maybe drowning because you can't breathe, shot in the lung. I mean, something hung. I mean, anything symbolic for cutting off your, your air pattern. But we as humans haven't really been taught the true uh, way of lucid dreams or premonitions or things like that. So we view ourselves as, oh my God, I'm going to be hung or I was hung. Oh my God, I was drowning or... We don't really understand, like, why am I dreaming this? I go to sleep and I dream of being drowned or, or um, being uh, drown drowning or being strangled. And I wake up the next morning panicking and freaking out, like, oh, my God, I almost died in my dream. What's going on? What do you, what do you mean what's going on? You introduced a foreign object in your body, and now this is how your body is reacting with this. This is what you would call a dream, you know, or in a sense a premonition, you know. Um, but this is giving you prophecy to yourself. 
now you're not going to drown. I mean, potentially you shouldn't drown. Not from, you know, the way that you saw it in that dream. This is really like symbolic. This is your subconscious or unconscious state speaking to you. But now we can go a little bit deeper. There's some dreams or premonitions that are actually real. What do you mean real? I mean real, like apply to real everyday life. For example, you're dreaming. Sorry, phone calls. Anyway, so now if you're in a vehicle, okay, you're dreaming and you're in your car and say you have a dream of you being in your car and you crash. Okay, this is when we got to lock in people. This is when we got to be smart. If you're having a dream and it applies to things that are real, then maybe you should apply what is happening in this dream as a potential reality or a potential real thing. Meaning, don't be on your phone every day when you're driving because you already dreamed of crashing your car. Don't be distracted. Stay focused. This is your body telling you, hey, you better stay on track. You better pay attention because you can get distracted. So not only in a sense is this symbolic telling you that in this life or in your future that you can be distracted. And if you're distracted, you can crash. It's telling you that from you not listening to this message that I'm giving you in this dream, oh, your ass is going to crash. So this is like showing you realistic things. I dream of my sister being pregnant. Well, God damn it, you got a sister. So maybe this is something you should pay attention to. Now you dreaming about being on some goddamn spaceship and flying around Mars and being in pyramids and stuff like that. I mean, it could be real, but that's not real here. We don't have a pyramid at the neighborhood corner. It's like, it's not life. Spaceships are not flying around every day in the life. So like, pay attention to those dreams, okay? The dreams are extremely realistic. The dreams are so, um, that makes sense. That's what I want you guys to understand. And I mean makes sense to the life that you're in, not the life that you're not in. If it applies to a life that you're not in, then this is symbolic about many astral things or things that maybe your other life essences are connected to. But your physical self is connected to this physical body, so you should really pay attention to the physical things that you dream. Like you being in your car, like your sister being pregnant, like shit. Say you won, say, say you dreamed of you winning the damn lottery. You don't even believe it. You're looking at that like, oh, psh, psh. I ain't winning no lottery. Okay. That's on you. You know, and you're not listening literally to your own prophecies or your own premonitions are coming to you in your dreams. So really, you know, in a nutshell, your dreams are always connecting you to you. But how are your dreams connecting you to you? It's either going to connect you to you from something physical or connect you to you something mental now both are connected through emotions emotions connect the mind um, I mean affect the mind emotions affect the heart so you either go to dream on things that connect to the heart meaning real <laughs> and then things that connect to the mind which you know the mind can often be creative and doesn't always have to be real the mind produces dreams that aren't always real the mind produces images that you swear you saw, but no one else saw them. So I want you to understand that the mind is creative and it should be creative. And it can creatively create some things that only you can understand or see. And that doesn't apply to the life because then we in the life can't really apply those sciences that you only understand in your mental. Anyway, let me just go through some of these. This is kind of like what I was just trying to have you guys understand. Simple got two two ty two type of dreams dreams that are extremely real realistic and, at and attach and connect to real things and then dreams that are more um, for mental processing for your body to process diff different mental uh, experiences and mental uh, emotional experiences meaning that the mind is governing the emotion not the mo not the emotion governing the mind it's deep it, it depends on how you how you perceive you know, uh, an energy or your energy, you know, from a more of an intellect, uh, an intellectual st stance or um, consistent stance, that's your mind, or more of a chaotic, you know, f f fluid, 
you know, a uh, state like the heart. But anyway, I'm gonna just go through some of these and just see what was being said. Um, okay, so let's go to the beginning. Yeah, so so I just I, I really just want you guys to understand that certain dreams connect to the other versions of you as well. Because you don't quite understand that you are many things. There are many things that make up the person you see in this mirror. You know, okay, I'm lying. Well, you've been many things. You've been a sister. You've been a mother. You've been a girlfriend. Uh, you've been a friend. You've been a student. I mean, you've been many things. So many things make you up. You know, so I want you to understand that. And because you are all those many different things, there are energies that connect to those titles as well. There are dead mothers here in our energy field or in our world as ghosts. And because you're a mother and because you are a good mother and a mother that they should be paying attention to and watching, they come to you. And now you're connected to these energies. It's deep. I wasn't really trying to go into that, but, you know, I'm just just stay with me. All right, just woke up. Hi, friend. Hello, friend. I'm going to smoke and chill with you. Appreciate it. Oh, I love the jams. That shit's done. What up, though, fam? What up? Um, I used to dream. Now I can't remember anything. Okay, um, those are having issues dreaming is an interesting construct because I'm having, I won't say I'm having issues dreaming. I just choose not to, to remember what I dream. There are times that I can easily tap into what it is I dream or remember what it is I'm, I dream. Sometimes I don't want to remember. Because you got to understand, these are emotions, people. When you go... See, when you dream, do you think you're not affected? There's dreams that you woke up in sweats, panic, might have shit on yourself, pissed on yourself. Real, like real. Nutted, orgasms. I mean, your dreams are powerful. So dreams are an emotional roller coaster. Some of us don't need that right now. We ain't about that life. I think that's probably the most simplistic way. It's your body, it's your rules. So you decide what you want to do with your body. Maybe these dreams was fucking with you too much. Maybe maybe Freddy Krueger was, was fucking with y'all too much. And you just decided not to allow you to remember these things. Everyone dreams. You just choose not to be haunted or um, affected consciously. I'm not saying unconsciously or subconsciously. You're not affected. I'm just saying consciously. You're not affected by your dreams. Some people remember their dreams so much that they're consciously affected. What do you mean? I'm telling you to remember your dreams. I'm telling you to remember the dreams that are real. Because if you consciously remember the dreams that are real, when it says your ass you go to hit the lottery, you might hit the lottery. You might actually <laughs> connect to some shit, you know? So, I mean, it's kind of deep, you know? Um, you know, but... We, we're not using the science of dreams. Dreams is just another science. Dreams is literally just another way of getting information. We're not using the science of, of dreams. We're using the science of life. There's enough things in the life for our brain to process. So we don't have to go to sleep and process things even deeper or even more uh, uh, advanced. When we're already, I guess, in the life processing enough shit. So be honest, people that are probably having problems with dreams right now is because they deal with so much shit in the life that they don't want to have to process anything else when they go to sleep. But it's your body, it's your rules. I keep saying that. Like, you define and decide what the fuck you want to do with your body. You always did. Um, finally, um, caught the live wire. Yeah, because I'm random. My bad. I dream all the time. I don't want to smoke, though. Remember when I told you you appeared in my dream? Yes. I've had over 40 different people hit me up in the last um, year and a half. I've had this group uh, to say that they have dreams with me there. Um, I don't remember dreaming of anyone. But the reality is I don't know what you guys look like. It's not nothing to be offensive. I don't want to put... Uh, faces and titles and and, 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 and and illusions to you guys. I can like feel you all. I don't even know who it is I'd be conversing with. I see your name, but like I said, I try not to put, I don't look at your profiles because I don't want, I don't want um, you guys to affect me outside of here. You know, this is like a reality, you know? So I, I do this like a science. You know, I, I try not to, uh, it's like bring work home. You know, I try not to bring work home, you know, that way I can have my my world and then this world, you know, so I, I keep it that way. It's interesting. I'm just keep going. though. Um, what if when you die transition, you wake up? What if when I'm sorry, what if when you die transition, 
you wake up. Um, okay, so he's asking the question. They say when you die in your dreams, you die in real life, but we never die in our dreams. So the question would be, if we were to die in our dreams, would we essentially wake up from what we would define as a matrix? Or will we wake up from what we call the sleeping dead? That's a good question. Um, in my opinion, um, if we were to die in our sleep, well, the body cannot decipher what's real and what's fake when it's dreaming. That's why if you dream of you peeing in the toilet, odds are you peeing on yourself in the real life. Um, same for when you take salvia or take hallucinogens, you're reacting to the things that you're seeing, but your body is still here in the life. But if you disconnect the connection, you got to go somewhere else. So, yeah, I do believe that if you were to die in your dreams, you actually have a more powerful ability to transition into a new matrix or a new system but this is okay this is where it comes if you were to die in your dreams you're going to pop up in another vessel that could be that could be um dangerous uh you could potentially pop up in another being so for example when you're abruptly killed i think in my opinion when energies are abruptly killed um, they process that emotion, whatever way they do, and then eventually when they transition that emotion, they pop up in a being. Us. So, like, they're kind of like, it's like get out. Like, you know how, like, in the get out, they put them on, like, a back seat, and then the body's, like, operating. They show you in Black Mirror. They show you kind of like they put this consciousness in, like, a back seat where it can view and monitor and even kind of affect things in a sense, but it's not governing the body. I think that's what might happen. That's why it's essential for us to hold on to our consciousness and not die out. Because if we die out, then our, our consciousness could potentially die out and then be summoned into another energy or being. This is my opinion. I don't know. Um, uh, what about repeat dreams? Repeat dreams would be the essential, um, would essentially be the same thing as uh, a loop. You know, the, the, um, the same looping construct that you deal with in the life so it's kind of like why do things repeat itself because you missed it you know so if a dream is repeating itself it damn okay life repeats itself but it repeats itself in different sh shapes and forms you don't really get the same thing consistently all the time it comes in new creative ways of showing it's the same thing um yeah i mean it will be no different than a loop you know, so if you're having a repeating dream, then you're not getting what the dream is trying to give you. So same for life. If you're having life repeat itself, you're not giving, you're not getting what the life is trying. Like, for example, someone's beating your ass, you know, that is what the life is giving you. So what is the choice that you have? You either figure out how to prevent this motherfucker from beating your ass or you continue getting your ass whooped. It's pretty simple. Walk away. Take some Taekwondo, fucking drug him. I don't know. Or figure out some way for the motherfucker to stop beating your ass or continue to get your ass whooped. So it's it's like that. Like we gotta kind of figure out how to fix our loops, fix our repeats. Because if not, we're just consistently doing the same thing over and over again, expecting uh, different outcomes, and that's called insanity. You know. So um, think about it. If you were to repeat your dreams over and over again, it would kind of make you crazy. It kind of make you insane. Like, why is this happening? Why do I keep like ground like Groundhog Day doing the same thing over and over again? It's going to create you know a level of insanity within the person. So you want to be able to be uh, you want to be able to um, learn from the life. And not let the and not let the life um, learn from you, or take from you. That's kind of the science or philosophy you could take from that. Um, you can create your dreams. I mean, we create everything. Everything that we perceive is our own creation. Why would it be anyone else's? Now, is creation influenced? Is creation um, tampered with? Yeah, most definitely. Um, but it's still yours. It's no, you are the only one that has the abil the ability to create what you see. 
I'm dreaming right now. Aren't we all? Um, what up? Um, okay, I dream I had a blowout on the on the way, and it happened just like it happened in the dreams. And I knew what to do, and it saved my life. Look at that. So she's explaining to you the science of her listening. See, I I, I did a post, and I said I lead my I lead my past self present, and I follow my. I follow my future self here. So this is applying the same concept. My past self is my past mistakes. So I lead my past mistakes to the present so it can learn. But then I still follow my future self because my future self has learned from the past, hopefully. And then now my future self, aka my future self giving me insight through dreams can tell me things from the future so I can help me in the present. Like for example, a blowout I had on the highway. I knew what steps I took in that dream. Now I apply the signs of what I did in that dream to the life. Boom. Connect the astral to the physical. Something that happened in not a, a real reality yet. A physical real reality. That's what I mean. Something that didn't happen in a physical reality but did happen on a mental reality. Then was able to be viewed. Um, observed and then brought into the life like that is what we need to do in the life we have to be able to figure out how to bring it down how to bring this divinity this divine information down to us like a dream that's one way where does the dream come from um, before you fall asleep you should uh, have an int uh, int intention oh here we go yes 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 so um Think of, think of, um, think of your dreams like a television, okay? And basically, you're like, don't think of it like a person controlling the the um the the the, the, the cable. You could be like, hey Siri, or hey Google, or hey um, Alexa, okay? So you're like, hey Alexa, um, find me a show. And you're like, and Alexa's like, okay, what type of show would you like to watch? And you're like, whatever you choose. That is what we do with our dreams. We let our dreams or Alexa just choose whatever it is from us because it's set up from our preferences, our standards. So we let Alexa or artificial intelligence or archons or angels or ancestors or goddamn all these days run you. Okay, so then you don't say, you know what, Alexa, I want to be a fucking action, action, give me action tonight. And this is your intention. If you viewed to see what made you, um, you, you know, I want to, dr I want to connect with my past selves, you know, and think of like the different hats and titles that maybe you're not in the, the life right now, but you always wanted to be. Think about who the fuck you want to be for Halloween. Think about a superhero. Think about something that makes you an action hero. Something that will make you into that character or drama. Why am I so emotional today? Why have I been so emotional? Just weighed heavy on my heart. You know what? I want to be in my emotions. Let me figure out. And it's, it's, it's like that simple. It's not difficult. Just put an intention or thought behind before you go to sleep. And then you would have the ability to have more control over it, what, over what it is that you dream. Now, this gets deep because in the life we have certain control over certain things. Certain things we have more control over than others. So we might have more control over our emotions than our mental state. Or might have more control over our mental state than our emotions. We might have more control over our solar plex than our heart. Might have more control over our root chakra than our whatever. And this is why... The, the dreams happen the way they do. Certain things they want you to address on the physical, so they'll give you real physical things that connect to the physical life. And there's some things they want you to address that's mental. Then you'll get real, or then you'll get mental projections that are symbolic and apply to you in the real life, but aren't real themselves. You're not flying on somebody's goddamn spaceship, but it does represent ascension. It does represent you connecting with your roots. It does connect with you. it does uh, connect with you learning more about yourselves or yourself. That's usually what they do. They tamper with your DNA, your genetic makeup, cells. All right, keep going. 
Um, what if we just slept 12 hours and have no recollection of the dream? I, I explained a little bit earlier. You're only choosing not to recall the dream. This is very similar to trauma, okay? You could have been abused. And I ask you in details what happened. You can't tell me. But that's because you chose to block those things out. It wasn't like it was removed. Bitch, it happened to you. Like, you were hurt. You were, you know, emotionally distraught. So don't act like they're not there. They're there. You saw them. You view them. You just chose to go dark. You chose to block them out. This is similar to the dreams. We just choose to block out these things. And like I was explaining, dreams are emotional. So because dreams are emotional and have their own experiences within themselves, sometimes we don't want those templates embedded on us in the life. Sometimes we deal with enough things in the life and we don't want to bring in the dreams and those emotions and those experiences into the life. Everything is energy, definitely. Feeling pain from a dream 20 minutes after waking up. That's deep. Um, I've never encountered or experienced that, so I can't speak on that. I've never experienced any pain from any dream, so I can't speak on any pain from any dream. Um, now, I was referring to a dream I had a while ago, last one I remember. I heard if you don't rim, we can't die. Um, rapid eye movement. Um, I heard if you don't uh, produce rapid eye movement, um, hurt if you don't produce we can die I wouldn't have any anything to say on that you know um, rapid eye movement is basically the dark pupils that are here going up into the pineal gland and it's actually viewing the light that is bouncing off of in my opinion uh, the, the gotta be the electricity that processes in your brain you know, so I honestly think the pineal gland is in a sense a mirror too. But anyway, it's when your your eyeballs are literally looking up into your pineal gland. Um, this is how, you know, like the undertaker, he rolls his eyes up and it's all symbolic for viewing one's, you know, tree of knowledge, a pineal gland. Um, when you're doing rapid eye movement, you're just tapping into like Akashic Records or your tree of knowledge or just more of like a holographic world. Um, uh now, if we don't go into REM sleep, we can die. I mean, we could die fucking from anything. You know, so... I Probably. You know, but I just know the science of rapid eye movement is when the, the, the pupils in your eyeballs are actually going to the top of your head and now tapping into your pineal gland. Or the, the, this part. Um, even in real life, die and jump timelines. Uh, because we have died and jumped timelines. See, I, I try to explain to people, like, when we tap into this astral realm, we're only tapping into sights or visions or experiences we've dealt with before. But not potentially on a physical level. But then potentially on a physical level, we're old. You know, but these are just memories. You know, you're just really just tapping into... Memories, timelines or memories, multiple timelines or multiple emotions or memories that were stuck. Stuck. JFK, that shit's stuck. So that's like part of a timeline. Martin Luther King being assassinated, that's stuck. It's a timeline. Things that stick create a timeline. I believe this happened several times to me. Possibly. Yes, what if you don't remember your dreams or you don't dream? I think I explained that. Um, we always dream, just don't always remember. Exactly. So you choose not to remember these dreams. Um, yeah, Matt, I've heard that before, but I rarely ever remember any dream, which as a kid, I would dream all the time. Um, then, okay, let's ask this question. Um, Tyra, are you actively working on anything to remember your dreams? It's kind of like, um, okay. It's like a, 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 a person goes into a coma, hits their head, and then forgets how to walk. Well, you could always remember how to walk again. Are you actively walking on them stilts, getting up, telling yourself, I can do this, moving your legs, working your muscles? Like, are you actively trying to reactivate something that went dormant? Your legs went dead. 
comas happen, you know? You went dead. It happens. But can you restart yourself? Can you, like, get your legs moving, start working slowly, you know? Uh, maybe if you remember one little speck, I saw a fucking cloud. Okay, wake up, write down August 18th, I seen a cloud. 19th, I seen a sun ray. And just, you gotta build. You gotta start somewhere. You know, a lot of us get so frustrated with ourselves because we shut down or we stopped like this happens this we're in a system that's like like it's trying to build walls you are constantly being stopped or 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 restricted or stagnant so it's not your fault for that system but you gotta keep pushing you gotta aggressively keep pushing forward so that you don't become dormant or you don't become stuck um Medical journals document these cases. Oh, yeah, definitely. And because the Freedom of Information Act, we could find a lot of interesting stuff if we just search for it. But are we? what do we research? What do we look up? Um, just got up after 12-hour nap. There ain't no nap. Coma, you say? Yeah. 12 hours seems like a coma. Anyway, a mini coma. I have tried. I dreamt, dreamt something good and wanted to remember a message as received when I woke up it gets sucked back inside. Um, but you have to work on regressing your mind. See, you have to understand a lot of a lot of things go back in because you don't this isn't important to you consciously. Like I guess that's the best way I could explain it. You got two parts of you. You have like a spiritual self and you have a conscious self. Consciously, you got bills, you got the alarm going off. You know, maybe your kids is about to get up, might be horny, might have to pee. Like, you got a lot of things consciously hitting you, like, right in the morning, you know? So, you're not, you're not working on regressing that part of you because so many other things are taken away from that part. You just got to work on it, you know? You got to, like, you just, it's, it's like small steps, like, actively, if you wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, pay attention to everything that's getting your attention. Like, let's start there. You know, certain things we got to literally start doing as templates to start fixing problems because they're not going to fix themselves. So certain small steps we got to take. If we feel like um, I can't remember certain things when I wake up, well, then let's start paying attention to the things we pay attention to when we wake up. Start there. You know, is your television on? Well, Turn the television off. Let's start there. Let's try that. You know, are you being abruptly woken up? What does your alarm sound like? Is it or oh, it's fucking rang or something un um um soothing or unpleasurable? Why are you why are you waking up so abruptly? We go say because you won't remember the alarm. Oh, you won't hear it? You know, I've heard people say that excuse before. If I don't put something, you know, uh, aggressive on, you know, I won't wake up. Well, then should you ask yourself, why do you have a, to be aggressively woken up? I mean, dig deep. That's it. I just, I'm not going to sit here and like pinpoint stuff that you guys need to do. That's not my job. I'm just trying to have you guys dig deep and think, think, think. We got to think. Why is the life affecting us? Why is one version of life affecting us from another version of life? Dreams is another version of life. So why is this life trying to pull on that life? And then what are the things that's doing it? Um, 16 hours, I believe, is considered a coma medically. I was just playing, but damn. Okay, see? There we go. Okay, so that's why I say it's a mini coma. You know, we're like four hours shy. You know, so... Um, sleeping 12 hours, um, you went somewhere, bro, you know, but that's not really my, um, forte to talk about like that pseudo stuff. I don't know where you went, you know, maybe you die for a second, you know, I don't know, but I believe we die every time we sleep. Um, but 12 hours is a long time. I haven't slept 12 hours straight in a while, so I can't really connect or resonate with that. Um, but if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, I can drop it now. Um, if not, I'm about to go. Okay. I don't think so. I think I answered all of them. Yeah, okay, so let me just recap this video and then I can conclude it. Um, 
I'm not saving this though. Uh, like I said, I have a lot of videos um, on my timeline, and I'm trying to allow people to catch up. So if I'm not really talking about like a topic I care about, you know, I mean, I care about this, you know, but this wasn't really like um, a video I choose to save, you know. Uh, this is more just reaching out to people, um, giving people, you know, just the live streams and live information, Q&A parts, you know, when they need it, when I'm available, when I have a little bit of time. Um, Tyra came back. I'm happy. Okay, I sleep with my journal so I can write down uh, things <clears throat> so I can help research them. I only sleep four to six hours. Yeah, me too. Okay, so um, want me to tell you a secret of a journal? When you have a journal, do you have any alive element next to it? What do you mean? Anything that's alive. You know, or I, I, I won't say alive. Um, have life essence in it. Paper doesn't have life essence in it. Ink might. But I don't even think that has life essence in it. What would be life essence? Sage. Um, I just brought um, Mogwort Mogwort helps with lucid dreams I brought Mogwort Like uh, it's it's bundled Like they do sage So I'll lay a little bit of that And I'll keep it by a journal Or by my, my bedside But here's the easiest way for you to be able To help open up your dreams Keep a glass of water That's it Right by that journal. Just keep a glass of water. Watch the power that comes with that. I give you like that little ins that that little um, advice. Ooh. See, this is why I tell you, you guys, you cut your hair. This shit is so deep. Like I've cut my hair and I literally can feel the difference. Like besides the fact that my damn head is so hot and I can feel the heat coming off my head, I feel like information goes out quicker. So I'm faster, like, but I can't retain it. So I'm like stumbling my words and the, my thought process is different. So I got to get adjusted. So like a haircut essentially is something that I have to get adjusted to. My body has to get adjusted to. So, body modifications. This now steps into a, a, a pretty deep topic. When you do body modifications to yourself, from a haircut to a piercing, your body has to adjust to it because it's something different now done to it. Your template has changed, and I can feel the difference. Um, you're not saving this one? Nah, I'm not saving this one. I have a lot of videos. I don't think it even makes sense for me to start saving like random things. This is so random. I don't even think I say anything important. So it's more like, I don't know, just, I say I do a lot of these videos to help you guys, but I do a lot of this for me. People, oh my God, you selfish. All right, cool. Like, how am I supposed to better myself if I don't have things like this to practice? You know, um, I never spoke so much. You know, I'm about to start a podcast. Some radio station hit me up. They want me to do some podcasts. So, like, I got to get, I got to get, like, in the habit of speaking more and more. You know, I can't be looking all crazy with hats on all the time and stuff. You know, that's what I want to do. So, I got to have haircuts. So, I, like I said, I just got to practice. Like, these are ways for me to practice, you know. I'll be getting new tattoos. My body's going to be changing again. I got to practice. I got to adjust. Um, I keep my art pad and colored pencils by my bed. So as soon as I wake up, I splash out the colors and or images I see. I've always been able to stop in the middle of a dream, fast forward, rewind, and sometimes shuffle the timelines around. Oh, you're, you're, you, you have a gift then. Um, and or change what's happening. It's pretty cool. I uh, love the video. Oh, man. See, I guess I did do a good job. I appreciate it. I didn't really think I was saying anything important. Um, yeah. Um. Y'all like yelling at me like, save the video. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Um, I love my journal. Yeah, your journal is key. Your journal is how you'll be able to um, keep. Um, I try to explain to you guys like these are like timelines, you know, and we're mashing into timelines, you know, 
Um, what do you mean timelines? You're mashing timelines. So I was born at a certain time. You were born at a certain time. Your timeline is your timeline. My timeline is my timeline. Now, what if we're together? We're mashing timelines. What if, um, besides just a person and a person coming together, what if I'm part of a previous timeline, like my ancestors, like my family? You know, so it's deep. You know, how old am I? You know, what if I'm reincarnated? You know, what if my timeline is old? What if I was, you know, an older energy, you know, that dates back four or 5,000 years ago? Well, I would want to learn about that timeline. You know, so dreams can help you tap into that timeline. And being able to document it and, and try to remember as much as you can. Here's another secret to dreams, guys. You got to get, get accustomed to where you're at. So when I do regressions to people, some of the key things I do to help people see where they're at. Oh, 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 wow. Okay. So I'm just here and a car behind me has like a little kid and he's like holding on to it and riding by. So I don't know, just random shit that happens in New Orleans. Anyway, I tell people when you, when you, when you can finally like tap into your dream, some people can do this. You have to pay attention to the details. What do you mean? Like, say you're looking at a mountain, okay? And you're looking at this mountain. I don't want you to keep letting the dream spin. You got to slow it down. Focus on that mountain. Does that mountain have snow on the top? And how do you figure out if that mountain has snow on the top? If you're looking at a mountain, you got to now question the details of that mountain. What's behind that mountain? Is there grass below that mountain? Um, can I get to that mountain? If you start questioning these things or building on you in connection to that mountain or you in connection to that space, you will be more connected to that space and be more conscious of you connected to that space. Look down. Can you see your feet? Stick your hands out. Can you see your hands? Can you actually become accustomed to yourself in that space? Keep going. Um. My journal has all my dad's thoughts in it, though. That's that. Those are those timelines. So I explained that your timeline can go older than you. And your timeline is also connected to another timeline, your parents. So I can see that your journal will have your dad's thoughts in it because you're connected to his timeline. And this also connects to if timelines have stopped at one point. Well, then you are the continuation of that timeline. And that becomes pretty deep. Because everything that was connected to that timeline, those experiences, those emotions, those ups, those downs, now become a part of you. Their struggles might become your struggles, but in a different way, in a different way, shape, or form. But it might resonate it's interesting how our timelines are often connected to others including parents ancestors etc um sorry not just sorry not dad sad okay no worries um but some some people do have that you know um for example um if you okay <clears throat> my best friend died if i was to can um if i was to compose a journal well it would be how i'm viewing him now whether it's in the astral a ghost an emotion i'm listening to a song and i feel him i'll write august 13th 8658 you know i felt my friend bobby bello you know what i'm saying and that's kind of like the sciences of how i'll continue that timeline you know, an energy that's no longer with me, it's still with me. And now how I attach its timeline to mine or be a continuation of that timeline. Also, well, he was lost. He was, he was, um, he was placed with a negative emotion, suicide, you know, so that's not going, that's not disappearing. That's not like, you know, rush under the rug. It never happened. This is real. So his suicide now is attached to my timeline, but I just choose not to view him 
in the light of his suicide. I choose to view him in many, many different lights. Now, does that moment or that emotion bother me at times? Sure. So it gets written about. Anyway, let me keep going. Um, the fact that it has to do with sad thoughts is just because some of the past, present, and future emotions and experiences you're dealing with are sad. But that's a lot of people. We go through sad experiences. Oh, that's why I bought them. I, I thought of Jack from um, Nightmare Before Elm Street. It's a good catch. It's all important or you wouldn't say it. So, so Matt, you're saying I got to keep my... I got to save this video? That's what you're saying, Matt? Matt, save this shit. Um, that's why every time I go back to show somebody, I can't find it. No, 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 that's not true. Every video is saved. I just recently came to the conclusion I'm not going to save every video because I have so many videos that saving every single one seems crazy to me. But if you guys want me to save the video, I'll save the video. It's not, well, I say the video is for me, but this video isn't for me, but this video will be for you guys. So if you want me to save the video, I'll save the video. That's fine. I keep um, times of when I wake up as well. Oh, that's smart. And then if you add them all up to a single digit, it gives you an even more powerful understanding of why you're waking up at those key, mo key moments. Reduce everything to a single digit, one through nine, and then figure out the um, attributes or meanings of each number. And kind of like have it. Like, so you got to make your, your, your journal like all encompass. Um, like, for example, uh, you dream key things. I keep seeing a bird. Well, then you need to write bird and then go to dream interpretations and have what that means. And then fire hydrant, what that means. And da, 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 what that means. And like low key have like references. Like you'll be a detective to your dreams. If you start realizing that your dreams definitely need detective work. You know, they're not going to just give you all the answers. It's like life doesn't give you all the answers. Motherfucker, you got to work hard. You got to like dig deep to get the answers in this life. They don't just come to you. <clears throat> Terminator style. I see timelines like tree branches and the leaves are experiences. Very true. And then the seeds um, or what they bear is the continuation of that timeline. Because eventually that seed or that fruit that it bears would be removed and then would start a new timeline. But it would still be the continuation of the previous timeline it came from. Our timelines are interact. Yeah, this is what your cross is. So you, I don't think you guys really understand the true form of interaction. Like, these are timelines. These represent timelines. Your masculine timeline, your feminine timeline, your uh, timeline of being a positive being going up. And this is really, this is really the symbolic. Because they try to tell you like up and down. Mm. It's more like up, down is one and the same. And then you get the left path. So you get the right path and then you get the left path. Satanists are actually the left path. So this is where you really get like your left path. This is symbolic for your left path. And then the cross going up or down, it depends on what direction you look at, is, you know, angels. They go up, they go down. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that concept. Uh, yeah, the, 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 well, yeah, because I was actually break, uh, breaking down the concept of the whole skull. Um, but I should probably watch uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, wouldn't Chris, uh, uh, Halloween be The Nightmare Before Christmas? All right, um... What about uh, saving them on your YouTube channel? Yeah, I have a couple of people that run a, a few of my different YouTube channels. I have a couple of them. Um, I don't really like any other social media platforms just because of the frequency of energies that resonate with them. Um, Instagram um, is really big on challenging. And I'm not saying, like, I'm not about being challenged. Like, uh, challenge, you know? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, the consistency of being challenged on Instagram is predominant. And who wants to fight all the time? I'm not. So I really don't choose the platform of, of um, Instagram. And I don't really choose the platform of YouTube because this is actually a pretty deep science. And then I got to go in because I'm getting yelled at. My girl's like, come in the house. You're always doing this shit. It's for the people. Um... So YouTube, okay, YouTube becomes a business. This is what I, I need you guys to kind of understand. The people that are on YouTube get a check. 
So because they get a check, Young Q come up on they block and start affecting them from getting checks or affecting them from them getting their money, a.k.a. I take their viewers, a.k.a. I start messing up their money or revenue stream, it becomes more challenge. And it's kind of like a drug dealer. Like, you step on a drug dealer's block, you know, you kind of like contesting that drug deal. That's what YouTube is. Like, you really like competing against other people over what? How are you competing over getting knowledge out? Like, who does that? So, like, YouTube is hard for me, too. Like, if I dedicated my energy, I'll be successful with YouTube. But I don't really care about YouTube. So, I give people, like, my videos are free. You can go right on my timeline. My page is public. Download my videos and throw them on YouTube yourself. Shit. If you were smart, you could download my videos, create your own YouTube channel, get some ad wear up there, and before you know it, <laughs> you have a highly successful YouTube page and you're making money. I don't need to check. I'm the one who put my videos up here for free. So, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it. You know, I guess that's the conclusion. Like, save the video. So, I'm going to save it. The video will be saved. And I'm going to go in the house. And tomorrow, I'm probably going to talk about something worth saving. But I'll save this. I appreciate y'all. The video is really basing... Or, or was based on dreams and was breaking down the simple concept that dreams are broken down as two things one that connect to your mental state how you're processing new information and one connects to your emotional state how you're processing your feelings things that connect to your feelings and dreams are often real crossing your car uh, my sister is pregnant my husband is cheating on me. These are things that connect to your emotions and they're often real. So you should pay attention to how dreams are conversing with you. They're basically telling you in a nutshell, it's either affecting your heart, meaning it's really happening, or it's affecting your mental state, thus affecting the astro, or how you perceive and thinking at this moment. That's it. Appreciate it. Love y'all. Peace. Together. Oh, you know, eh. All right.